Hi there. In this video, we're going to be talking about the clock divider module and three different ways you can utilize it. Let's kick things off by quickly demonstrating what a clock divider is and what it does. Here we have a very simple patch. This mini LFO is sending the square wave out, which is going to act as our clock source or what's going to give everything the timing. That's feeding into a clock divider that's going out into the close trigger input here. As you can see, it's currently dividing by one, so this means there's no divisions taking place. If we wire this out, we're just going to hear the clock source triggering the hats, and that's it. Let's wire the output and take a listen. This is really thrilling stuff, I'm sure, but let's try dividing it. Let's go over here and divide by two. And again. So I'm sure you can tell what this is doing. It's receiving a clock signal and then dividing it. And once it hits that division, it sends out the clock signal. Let's set this back and go back to a division of one. And then let's divide by four here and send the four out to the open hat trigger. And now we're going to hear a closed hat. And for every four closed hats, we'll hear one open hat. Let's take a listen. With that out of the way, it's probably easy to see why this is a pretty exciting module, because not only does it let you get complex rhythms from a single clock or gate source, it also lets you just expand everything into more interesting rhythms by dividing by, I guess, non-conventional divisions. Instead of dividing by 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on, we could do 3, or 5, or 7, or 9, and get some complex, kind of polyrhythmic things happening, which is pretty fun. To demonstrate that here, I've got a very similar patch. We have the mini LFO and I have a single square out here going into all these different clock dividers. Now I'm going to feed these into each of these modules. As you see right now, they're just all being triggered. And if we wire this out, it's going to sound just kind of like a hot jumbled mess. which is probably not something we really want to actually use. So let's use the clock divider module to divide the clock signal and start getting a more complex rhythm from only a single clock source. Pretty neat stuff, right? So let's take this same idea and apply it to something melodic instead. In this patch here, I've got a very, very basic generative thing going on. This mini LFO is the main clock signal, so it's only going out to the random task. The random task is getting the clock, as you can see here, and that is feeding out to all these different modules and feeding each of these different lines. The CV out here is set to five volts, and this is pretty important to do because it's going to take five volts in order to trigger the envelope generator, which we're going to need for all of these different lines of this patch. The CV out here also feeds to the input of the quantizer, which is what I'm using to make it quantize to a specific scale. And then I'm using the input amount here to dial this back. So I'm not getting all five volts of range because that can result in some very, very high pitch tones that are just kind of annoying. The output of that here feeds into a sample and hold input, and the external trigger is coming from the CV out of the random task. Once again, that is for five volts, which is important because without it being five volts, it would not trigger this. This is to make sure that the note is held for every gate signal that's received by the envelope generator. That way we're not hearing multiple notes per pulse, if that makes sense. Other than that, there's not much to talk about. The output of the sample and hold feeds the pitch to the oscillator, oscillator goes out, and there's not anything happening in terms of effects or filters or anything too exciting. Now, I've unwired the other two lines of this patch, and this is going to show why this is so exciting, because as you can see, we're only using the one LFO and the one random task, and then just some sample and holds and some clock dividers. This is going to take what is a extremely simple one-part generative thing and give it a more complex feel by adding some harmony and rhythm. Let's turn this up and take a listen to the first part. Now, it's not really all that exciting. It's cool, but it's pretty simple. Let's go down and take a look at the second lane here. I've got a clock divider and that's getting the CV out of the random task here, dividing it by three, and then I'm feeding that into the sample and hold external input as well as the gate in of the envelope generator for that second line. If we wire this out and take a listen, what's going to happen is for every three notes from the first line we hear, we'll hear one note from the second line. And since it's sample and holding and getting a different trigger, it's going to sample and hold a different note than what's playing on the first line, which makes things sound a lot more complex. Let's dial it up and take a listen. So 
So now we're sort of cooking with fire, right? So let's go down to the final line and repeat this process once more. As you can see here, I'm dividing by five. I'm not using the input because I've got input link here, which means that the input here is going to be the same input that this clock divider uses. Once again, the sample and hold here is also receiving the CV in from the quantizer, and because it's being subdivided with that external trigger, we're going to get a different note every time. And to further modify this, I've also tuned this third oscillator up a fifth here by adding plus seven semitones. Now, let's feed this to the output and take a listen to the final result. And I think that's a pretty exciting way to work with generative patches or just to add a little bit of extra rhythmic interest to something that might be otherwise a little bit static. The final trick I wanted to show here today is using a clock divider to create a sub oscillator. And this is a pretty cool thing because when you use a clock divider on an audio rate signal, it's going to divide it every time it crosses over. What this means is it results in a square waveform an octave below so long as we divide by two or a multiple of two for further octaves down. This patch here is very, very straightforward. We have an oscillator, envelope generator, and amplifier, which is something I'm sure you've wired up yourself a million times. Where this gets interesting is the clock divider and the attenuverter here. If I play this, let's take a look through the oscilloscope. We should just see a triangle waveform right now. In order to add a performance control to this, all I did is right click on the attenuator knob here, went to perform assign and assigned it to knob one, and then renamed that as sub oscillator. Now, what's going to happen when I turn up this performance control, if you take a look at the oscilloscope, is we should see a square waveform come in because we're going to divide this signal by two, as you can see here, and increase the amount with this performance control. Let's give it a play and see what happens. which I think is pretty cool stuff. If you'd like to download this patch or the little generative patch, you can do so with the link down in the description below. I think that wraps everything up for this video, so thanks for watching, and for more information on Voltage Modular or to pick it up for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.